Welcome to Wick Antiques, um, which this year is hosting an exhibition of objects and artifacts relating to the, largely relating to the, the uh, era of sailing navy in the Georgian period, with a particular focus and emphasis, of course, on the greatest figure of that, that era, which is Admiral Lord Nelson. Now, we're lucky enough to have on display several objects and artifacts that belonged to Nelson, including uh, eight silver plates by Paul Storr, which were presented to Nelson after the Battle of Copenhagen in 1801 by Lloyd's Coffee House, now Lloyd's of London. Uh, and these plates were designed and ordered by Nelson to be taken to sea. So there's every chance that these silver plates here were in his flagship Victory uh, and were used by himself and his officers on the evening before Trafalgar in October 1805. But for the short time we have here, I just want to focus on three items connected to the Battle of the Nile. The Battle of the Nile, shown uh, on the wall there in a watercolour which was completed in Naples in the early 19th century, was of course the great victory that Nelson secured when he led, boldly led a squadron of warships into Abukir Bay on the North Egyptian coast uh, and overnight destroyed the French fleet that was anchored there in support of the recent invasion of Egypt by Bonaparte uh, and a French army. By destroying the fleet in this famous action, Nelson cut off Bonaparte from Europe uh, and led eventually to the liberation of Egypt from French control two years later. The watercolour, which is a rare watercolour completed by an Italian artist, Nelson is not a hero in, in Naples or in Italy, um, shows the climactic moment when uh, the French flagship Lorient, which had carried Bonaparte to Egypt, uh, exploded when her powder went up. And in that single explosion, which to that date was the largest man-made explosion in history, uh, over a thousand members of the crew died. Nelson, immediately after the battle, was fated as the great hero of Europe. He had given hope to the various monarchs that were besieged by the revolutionary armies of France that they might secure an eventual victory over France, and he was lauded by the monarchs of Europe. The first potentate to hear of the victory was the Sultan of Turkey, Selem III, whose territory in Egypt had been invaded by the French, so he had a particular reason to be thankful to Nelson for securing the victory. And Selem unusually gave an order that a fine jewel should be sent to Nelson by way of thanks and in way of recognition for Nelson's gallant action. Selem ordered them a shalenk, which was a, uh, an Ottoman order of chivalry. Uh, a turban jewel should be made for Nelson and sent to Nelson uh, by way of thanks. And the jewel that was sent to Nelson had 13 plumes on the top of the jewel, representative of the 13 warships that Nelson had captured uh, in the action. The centre of the jewel rotated by clockwork. The Ottomans loved toys and novelty items. The jewel itself descended the Nelson family until 1951 when it was stolen from the National Maritime Museum in London and was destroyed and never to be seen again. The jewel in the cabinet here was made last year and is an exact replica of the jewel that Nelson received from the Sultan, including the clockwork mechanism that rotates the central star and is an extraordinary recreation of a once fabled jewel. After the Battle of the Nile, Nelson took his battered squadron of warships into Naples, which was one of the few safe and friendly harbours to the English Navy uh, in the Eastern Mediterranean, and sought refuge with the King of Sicily and of Naples, Ferdinand IV. Nelson himself had been wounded, wounded at the action quite severely in the head, uh, and so he sought refuge in the house of the British ambassador in Naples, Sir William Hamilton, where he was cared for perhaps overly cared for by Sir William's wife, Emma, famously. Nelson arrived in Naples on the 22nd of September, so some six weeks after the action, having lingered in the Bay of Abukir to repair his ships, 
And on the day he arrived in uh, Naples, he was presented with a very fine, large drawing representative of various images of victory. This is a miniature printed version of a very large artwork that was presented to Nelson uh, and it had been prepared by a French royalist emigre in Naples called Baron Vamel de Fages and it's represented various items of naval victory including the British lion defeating the French basilisk uh, on the central uh, motif here. And there are Nelson's initials, symbols of naval victory and other very complex imagery in this drawing. On the 28th of September it was going to be Nelson's 40th birthday and to welcome the hero to Naples and also to celebrate his birthday the Hamiltons decided to host at their palace in Naples a grand ball and party for Nelson. And for the ball that was to be held in the grounds of the palace they arranged for a service of porcelain to be decorated using elements of this drawing in the six days before uh, the party after the 22nd of September before the 28th of September a service of white English cold por uh, porcelain which had belonged to Sir William Hamilton and was in his possession in the ambassadorial residence was sent to the imperial porcelain factory in Naples to be very hastily decorated and painted with symbols derived from the drawing for, to, for use at the supper party ahead of the ball on the 28th. So we know precisely when this service was decorated in Naples between the 22nd and 28th of September 1798 and many of the devices on the service uh, are lifted directly from the drawing that had been given to Nelson. So the fouled anchor, the symbol of the Royal Navy, Nelson's initials, HN, a symbol of naval coronet, laurel leaves, and around the border, oak leaves, symbolic of victory. Each piece of the service, which extended, surviving extends to 29 pieces, uh, shows a little vignette of a scene from the Eastern Mediterranean, and several pieces are decorated with scenes from Abakir Bay. Uh, and we believe that these scenes were copied again from drawings which have been completed by officers in Nelson's squadron with ships during the action. It's very hastily decorated uh, by probably by artists at the Boston factory who had never seen a battle, uh, never seen oak, English oak, uh, and so it has a wonderful vividness and naivety to the service. After Nelson returned to England, uh, with the service, having dined on it himself with the Hamiltons uh, on the 20th of September 1798. We know he gifted it to his sister Catherine, who had subsequently married Henry Matcham, so it was Catherine Matcham. He gifted this to his sister uh, because he arranged a much larger service of a more sophisticated decoration to be made by the Coldport factory. But this is the very first service presented to Nelson. Catherine Matcham's descendants sold this service at Sotheby's in 2005, uh, but at that time, having been on display at the National Maritime Museum for some 40 years, it wasn't fully understood. The connections had not been made between the devices on the service uh, and the drawing that had accompanied it uh, at the time of its gift by Sir William and Emma Hamilton to Nelson in 1798. So for the first time, we have now rediscovered its meaning and placed it in the hierarchy of objects, important objects, that belonged to Nelson in his lifetime. Uh, for collectors of Nelson and naval material, of course, there is a pyramid of importance. There's items that belong to the, the Navy of that, that period. There are objects that belong to the many accomplished and illustrious officers that surrounded Nelson, including uh, Admiral Hood. And we are lucky enough to have a service of plates from Admiral Hood and various other uh, gold and hardstone mounted seals that were used by Admiral Hood at sea. But at the very pinnacle of these, uh, this pyramid of importance uh, are items that actually belonged and were used by Nelson, such as this service of porcelain and the silver service uh, that he took to sea. Because it was very important for an, an officer of Nelson's stature and in the seven years from between the Battle of the Nile and his death at Trafalgar, he was the most famous naval officer in Europe and a great celebrity at home. It was important for him that he should display his status 
through the use of precious uh, and beautiful objects, not only within his own uh, cadre of officers, but also to the wider public. It bankrupted him nearly in the process, and when he died, he died uh, in severe debt and left his uh, then mistress, Emma Lady Hamilton, in great difficulty, which led eventually to her early and sad demise in poverty. Uh, but these objects tell a story of the last few years before Nelson's death at Trafalgar, uh, depicted here in a portrait of uh, the quarter deck of victory at the moment that Nelson was uh, struck by a musket ball. Uh, this painting was painted by an artist called Samuel Drummond immediately within a day or two of the news of Trafalgar reaching London, which it did on the 6th of November. 1805. Uh, the battle, of course, was on the 21st of October, and Drummond, who had been to sea and had served in the Royal Navy, was very eager to secure the lucrative print market. So he rushed to his easel, and using the scant and sketchy accounts of what had happened to Nelson, he uh, composed this vivid image of Nelson collapsing on his gun deck, uh, having been on his quarter deck, having been struck uh, by a musket ball. He's shown supported by some gunners. Uh, Captain Hardy with the hat is indicating that the French ship Redoutable, which had been alongside Victory during the action, was striking her colours and, and surrendering. Uh, so in the moment of Nelson's death, he realised he had secured a great victory. This image remarkably was issued as a print in the London print shops just six days later. So Drummond completed this painting, shown here, passed it to an engraver, it was engraved and published within six days of the news of Trafalgar reaching London. Uh, so he did indeed capture the first wave of commemorative material made to commemorate that famous uh, and great occasion. So this indicates a very vivid moment uh, in the aftermath and it has some errors to it, uh, such as you will notice that Nelson is showing a wound on his chest quite clearly. And in fact, the early reports of Nelson's death did say that he had been struck in the chest uh, during the action. But in fact, we know now, of course, that he was struck in the shoulder uh, during the action. The ball went through his shoulder straight down into his lower spine. But so Drummond was relying only on the scant, sketchy first details when he produced this image. Finally, immediately after Nelson's body returned to England in December 1805, still carried in his flagship victory, his family ordered a series of precious rings to be made for distribution amongst the closest members of the Nelson family and to his closest advisors and friends. Uh, and these rings, uh, known as mourning rings or memorial rings, were decorated with Nelson's initials, now NB, representative of his titles, uh, Lord Nelson, Duke of Bronte, a dukedom that had been awarded by the King of Naples after the Nile. This particular ring here, which is shown uh, in the front of the cabinet there, was the ring we know that belonged to Catherine Matcham. So this is Nelson's sister's ring that she wore at Nelson, her brother's funeral, state funeral, uh, at St Paul's Cathedral in January 1806. Uh, and some 50, we believe, of these rings was made, but rings that can be provenanced importantly to close members of the family are the ones that achieve the highest interest. So that is a galloping tour of Nelson's entire career through his objects in the last 10-15 minutes. Do we have any questions or, or about anything else that I may not have mentioned uh, on the stand? Full of treasures. If not, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.